Talk some NBA, sponsored by the Capital One Venture Card. What's in your wallet? All right, let's move to a couple of Lakers legends, Kobe Bryant and Shaquille O'Neal, who got into it this week after Kobe said that if the big man had hit the gym more, mm. he would have won 12 effing rings. Mm. Shaq fired back that Kobe would have won 12 rings if he ever passed the ball. It all ended with Kobe tweeting he had nothing but love for Shaq and that there was no beef between them and Shaq appearing to agree. Question here is, you think Kobe and Shaq actually are friends? I think they are. Um, this is a very light level of friendship. Mm. The one that when you used to beef with a frown, now we beef with a smile. But we still no house calls. You're not coming through the crib just on the random. Mm. Um, because their foundation was met. And when they met each other, it was like beef already in the waters in terms of who's going to be the alpha, who's going to be the lead dog, even though Shaq won that out on the court. It still was the eagerness and the hunger of Kobe that was always biting at Shaq and ultimately won that decision of who stays with the franchise. So I just think because of the foundation, it's very difficult for them to be on the high level of friendship, but I certainly see a mutual respect. Mm. You know? it, it, Darnell, I'm going to bring you into this because I know you're a Kobe fan. Yeah, Kobe but lover. me listening to Marcellus, where in Indianapolis, I, I wouldn't call that friends. I would call that an associate. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I, hear I hear that. That's a good point. And I kind of I kind of agree with you on that. With like, like, I don't think there's a, a beef at this point. Obviously, we know their history, you know, earlier in the years where there, there were some beef. But I think Shaq has gotten over that. And they're both have, have grown to where they're over that point. But... I think this, I think Shaq just kind of misunderstood Kobe's point. Kobe didn't say Shaq wasn't a hard worker. He just saying there was another level that if he would have worked, worked to a higher level, that he could have been the GOAT. So I think Shaq was just uh, probably took it the wrong way early on. And then once he kind of thought it, he thought it through, thought it back, he was like, yeah, you know, I ain't tripping. So you know what? I can buy into that, that that's what Kobe's saying, because I, I was somebody that thought as a football, oh, I work hard. And then I got to college and I was like, oh my God, they just redefined hard work for me. Mm. And I struggled with that redefinition. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Big time. Yeah. And so I think a lot of times when you got to the NFL, I'm probably there were some guys like, holy cow, this is working. This is how I we thought. Get it. <laughs> right. And so I just think Kobe's definition of working hard and Shaq's is different. And I think for good reason, Shaq is seven foot, 300 and some odd pounds, mm -hmm. damn near from birth. Yeah. If he worked as hard as Kobe th thinks he should have, maybe he runs out of gas at age 31. Right. <laughs> and is out of the league. And so I just think they have a misunderstanding of hard work. I don't think they're really friends. I think they're both legends, and it's better for them to get along to some degree than to be at war with each other. Well, I think they are friends because if they're in the same situation, association, they're going to walk over to each other and give each other love and talk through it. A associate, you're just going to acknowledge they're there and it ain't going to go too much deeper. Head head oh, oh, yeah, I know yeah. you. All right, text your boy later. Never. Uh, you know, you, you don't ride a Ferrari the same as an F-150. So Kobe is always telling Shaq, I needed more. And Shaq's sitting there, Kobe, I needed less. That's why we had a signal that we said, Kobe doing too much out here against Detroit. Don't give him the ball anymore. So it's a weird reconfiguration and calculation you always have to have in sports. And everyone always plays this Frankenstein game. Man, if you took Kobe's mind and heart, put it in LeBron, oh my God. Oh, I actually believe that. I don't. I know you do. <laughs> and it's a crazy thing because when you're, you know, when you have these gifts, you, you have to understand that you also, no one's perfect, so there's going to be a counterbalance to whatever gift you have. Like you said, if Shaq went out there, rode that F-150 like a Ferrari, it's going to blow the tires. Something's going to give, so I think that they both need to respect where they are. All right, coming up, we'll give you our first ever approval rating for Carly Lloyd. Is I think this may be the first woman we've given an approval rating to. Uncle Jimmy will tell us what he thinks of the soccer star turned NFL job candidate Next! Saquon, if you're watching, part of the reason LT is so respected, part of the reason he's in the Hall of Fame, part of the reason he earns millions of dollars talking about football on the NFL Network is because of the nine straight years he was a beast for the San Diego Chargers. All right, Eric Dickerson and LeVar Arrington have returned. Marcellus, I know all three of you are going to disagree with me. 
Get us rolling. You got a problem with <laughs> do your Thomas job. and do your job. Uh, Get us rolling. I'm just over here trying to recover from them shots you're <laughs> taking at these former football players. Uh, I'm telling you. Dang. Would like, y'all show the NFL some love, man? We do. Man, man you got an NFL shirt under this. Is, under this <laughs> I wish I did. Yeah, but you have to also balance the equation. Let me say this to my man, my former teammate, who I saw first practice in the NFL all the way through. And Ladanian Thomason, you're preaching to the choir, brother. Um, and I want to edit what he said, because I think too many athletes always say, it's a business at the end of the day. I walked into the NFL, and I knew it was a business at the beginning of the day, okay? I woke up with money on my mind. And you know why? The only love language that is really understood in the NFL is currency, is money. Don't come up to me talking about how good I am, how great I am. Oh, my God, you keep this up. I don't want to hear anything but cha-ching, because that's what I know you really are putting your money I want a DNA mouth. test. Is he yes. your daddy? Because uh, y'all think just alike. Y'all think just alike. That's a, another one of my football fathers. <laughs> that's we, my we know, own, we right? know what's up. So you know what's funny? And this is how they mesmerize you in the league. This is how they get you. You know what? You must sacrifice for a ring at all costs. This is all about that ultimate television show called the Super Bowl. And if you don't get a ring, what was your career really worth? I was like, I'll tell you what my contract <laughs> was. That's what my career was really my worth. Banker is. And this is how they do it. And only in sports. Because if you look at it, if you don't win a ring, you, you deem some kind of loser. Oh, you fell short of. You know how many artists are out there that haven't won an Oscar? Will Smith hasn't won an Oscar. Is he a loser? No one even goes there. You know, you look at Huh? He no. didn't win one for all Man, I, come on, brother. Oh, go ahead. Okay, Keep going. Keep okay. Going. let's talk about the fact that Guns N' Roses ain't won a damn Grammy. Are they losers? Like, it's amazing. Only in sports, oh, I must get my ring or fall short. Get your money and get up out of there. I love LT for saying this. Hey, brother, I agree with you 100%. You know the funny brother, thing Brother, you mean son. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> See, you got, that, I mean, you got that NFL shirt on that jacket. I know you, I you do. Look, I'm telling you, the, the first thing people holler about, the greedy football player. Y'all want all the money. I was looking, why they don't say the greedy owners? They don't say the greedy baseball player, yeah. but the greedy football players. I mean, that's what, Phil Collins, I mean, if people will pay Phil Collins. How, how much Phil Collins made? He made $50 million. No big deal. Mm. I paid I paid $600 to go to a concert. No big deal. But when it comes to us, yeah. it's a big deal. Mm. Football is a physical sport, and football is about business. Because when they can't use you no more, get out of here. Say you it. can't make the club in the tub. <laughs> uh, I think it's a complex conversation. And, and I look Thank at you, it. LeVar. I look LeVar. at it. Uh, oh, Thank you, LeVar. Come on, LeVar, man. Come on. Uh, uh, You're a football player first. You're a football player. First of all, first of all. I'm at the I'm Dickerson. I'm, <laughs> I, I, I like to look at myself as an intellectual before I am a football player. And, and I never I never subscribed to just being a football player. And yes. maybe that was part of the reason I think you've why. gone a bit too far, but yeah. go ahead. <laughs> I, don't I, I don't know. I got, I got a pretty good resume. Um, but, but, you know, the the interesting thing about how it applies to how basketball players think and how football players think, I think it's interesting because basketball players want to be football players. Football players want to be basketball players. Entertainers want to be one of the, ah, the, the two you guys. intellectual. I know no basketball. I ain't made a basketball I, player uh, yet. So, yo, yo, dog, I switch places with you. I want to oh, get yeah, hit, oh, man. I want to get oh, hit like you. Well, no, no, I don't, if they were tough enough, no, they would. I don't, but go ahead. I, I'm, I'm, I I'm speaking on like more <laughs> what, of the, what? you know, uh, no. more, more of a. Uh, a mental emotional aspect of it. You, you want what you're not a lot of times. Yeah, I mean, you see, I mean, come on, you saw basketball players playing the flag football games, Ken, Ken, uh, Durant mm -hmm. and, and LeBron's, because they, they love what football represents. So yeah. anyways, the, the reality of what I'm thinking here is, you know, I, I played with Deion Sanders, and Deion Sanders is one of the original guys that coined that, that whole you know, go where the money is and, and make sure that you're not married to one team. Mm. Um, and, and doing so. But I also played with a guy by the name of Daryl Green, who subscribed to a different a different way of, of looking at things. And I, I don't know, maybe, maybe and, and I don't want to look at what somebody's household is and how that, that plays a part into it. But for me, I grew up in the house with, with a preacher. 
I know that Daryl Green is very <clears throat> deeply rooted in, in the church community as well. And I think a lot of times when you're looking at the stability and, and the communal aspect of it, I don't think it's actually being brainwashed to, to be the zombie football player. I think it's more or less brainwashing in terms of what you mean to that community. I always, I always looked up to Daryl Green and wanted to be like Daryl Green as a Washington Redskin because of what it meant in the community. And that meant way more to me, sorry, than the paycheck. It really did. My, hey, hey, listen. There are a lot listen, of communities. Listen, listen. Hold on, hold on now. Mm -hmm. Where I, where I come from, I went. I, I grew up in a place where my mother had to go do. Um, she had to go do parent-teacher conferences in their house, in their homes, in their, in their their project complex. I grew up in a place where we saw the type of violence that you probably saw where you grew up from. And 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 the reality to me was. What motivated me to make it to where I made it to, to play at the high level that I made it to, was all the, the family members that I lost to senseless violence, to all of the family and friends that, that I, was, I was losing and seeing struggle and suffer. So my motivation was not the money to begin with. My motivation was how successful can I be to impact the community that I came from. So why'd you play for multiple teams? Why'd you have holdouts? The reason why I left I mean, Washington, the, it wasn't for the community. I, I never held out. I never held out. I, I came I in late. I came in late. Came in late. I what? came in late. They called out a holdout, but being an intellectual, <laughs> I know that not having a contract, you can't be a holdout Good if point. you don't have a contract yeah, in the yeah. first place. But that's a whole nother deal. Right. But when I left Washington, it was because I had to leave. It wasn't because I wanted to leave. I had to leave because of what took place, the, the, the rapid deterioration of, of the, the relationship. I had to leave because they were trying to destroy my, my, who I was as a person.